This is the Edelred Hexon stove. This is the box, of course. And the um, the writing is as you see it here. This has multiple items that come with it. It has a tool kit that unscrews. It's very nicely put together. All the components that you need for routine maintenance are in here, including a tool that you see here. I will have more comments about the tool and also the replacement jet that is included with this tool kit. It has a very small instruction manual, which I have not found to be extremely useful, which is why I'm doing this video. However, I suggest going to the uh, website for Edelred. They have a very nice video on general uh, startup routine for this uh, stove and multiple comments about it. And uh, it's in German, but it has English subtitles. Within the box, there's of course the the stove in a nice little bu uh, bag. It has a very light bottle and a pump, of course. I will have more comments about the pump. There is a small cap that comes as well that could be used for the fuel bottle if the pump is not in place. And it has a windscreen that also comes with it. This is the small bag of parts without the other, the multi-tool uh, shown here. It consists of a number of O-rings which are uh, shown with respective markings for their particular um, size or type. Uh, unfortunately, these are not particularly marked in the, um, in the instructions. And then there's some maintenance oil, small cup for the, uh, for the pump, and an extra jet. This particular type stove is one of the more attractive ones that I have seen on the market. In some respects it's almost a work of art and uh, I like it very much in terms of the aesthetics. It has what some people might call that German quality touch to it. It feels more like a piece of jewelry than a backpacking stove. It's called Hexon, I think, because it's got six sides. As you can see here, uh, you have three long ones, three short ones, but it comes out to six sides. Uh, these legs are almost too nice. It's a very simple but um, functional design, much better than almost any other stove I've ever seen. When collapsed, these legs are very close to the sides, as you can see. They spring open. There is a, uh, a difference in the way that these are set up. You'll notice, I guess, that the bottom part is here, but the top part of this leg is over here. In other words, there's an offset, and that offset provides a springiness that is a kind of a natural quality of this particular design. No other features necessary in order to get these things to spring open very nicely at again perfect 120 degree angles you can see how this lines up with the sides it just has a remarkable quality to it also when this thing is open this open area here can accommodate a relatively small mug or other type of uh, pot I've put a 600 cc uh, titanium uh, mug on this and it fits with a little room to spare so it gives you kind of an idea of what that's like. There's of course the spreader plate and the bell that is used for uh, the combustion process and has a priming pad on the inside and it has a jet and all these other kind of things. There are some, uh, there's a plate that's underneath it. Uh, this uh, nut uh, is used to, atta to attach the burner and generator to the housing and uh, these are hex head type screws. Uh, I think they're meant to keep this plate uh, attached to the housing. This is, I think, stainless steel. This housing, I think, is made out of aluminum alloy. Uh, these, I think, are metric 
or whatever, but standard uh, hex head uh, Allen wrench type thing I, I have, it won't fit this correctly, so I didn't try to take this apart. Um, this area over here can come apart, this is the fuel line, and of course you have the connection here that is meant for uh, the connection to the fuel bottle or to canisters 